Man United 3, Bournemouth nil. Comfortable performance in the end. Wasn't all rosy. There were some moments where we had to uh, rely on David De Gea to make sure we got a clean sheet. But overall, very, very happy with that. And you know what? There's just a sense that you kind of know what you're going to get with Man United now. That we haven't been able to say for a long time. My biggest thing about this season is I want to see an identity. I want to see a way of playing. Um, and it might not last the whole 90 minutes. We might do it in spells. But a lot of the time we're having big control over games and most of all we're creating chances and we're dispatching of teams, you know, at home, at, at Old Trafford and it's becoming a fortress and that's what I want to see. Uh, quite a few standout performers today. In the first half, I thought we was actually a little bit wasteful. I thought that we was probably not at our best. But when you need that little bit of quality, yeah, that little bit of sprinkle, great ball in from Christian Eriksen from the free kick um, that Marcus Rashford, I think, won. Um, and Casemiro, again, this guy. You lot said I had the Casemiro agenda at the start. Listen, I was I was dubious, I was skeptical. I just didn't I just didn't know how he was going to perform here, you know, um, outside of that Real Madrid team. And just he's just going from from strength to strength, you know. And it's the variations of his performances. If you look at how he played against Nottingham Forest, stroking around, doing absolutely everything today, not so much so, but he still manages to impact the game almost all the time he plays. Scores a great goal, um, interceptions, anticipation, just everything you want out of a midfielder. And someone said to me earlier um, that he's, he's, he's had a, what did he say? Oh, was, it, was it the best impact since Cantona or some, something like that? And I thought, what might be a bit strong, but just the way that he's playing and, and he was basically saying how lucky we are to have him and the count and our bit, I, I kind of let that bit go, but I kind of looked at what he meant and what he meant was it's just that we're lucky to have him and he's really happy to see him play here and that's how I feel looking at him. I'm just thinking, what a player that we've got on our hands, you know, and, and I was, and like I said, I was a bit dubious thinking, how is he going to be? But he's, he's just proven that he's going from strength to strength. He just reads the game so well. He knows where to be. Yeah, the odd time he might go, go steaming in and get skipped around. But other than that, he's, he's, he's good in the pass. He's, he's, he's fading the ball, putting balls around the corner, you know, setting players up with assists, a couple of good pass um, balls into the box as well, first time. He's just playing with a level of intelligence because he's played at that level for his whole career, you know? So, fantastic from him. Luke Shaw, man. Luke Shaw. Like, he just looks so strong and competent right now, whether he's at left centre-back, whether he's at left-back. You know, scores a great goal. He actually starts that move as well, a really powerful run, takes a good touch out of his feet, you know, bursts past the... Um, the Bournemouth player, you know, finds um, finds um, um, Bruno and then it ends up at Ganacho, continues his run and scores with his weaker foot. Brilliant. And in the tackle, in defence, he was fantastic. He's solid. He's very assured, excuse the pun. He really is. You just know what you're getting with Luke Shaw right now. And the ball that he plays to Bruno when Bruno cushions it to Rashford and we get the third goal, that was absolutely brilliant as well. Um, so I think he was, he was really good today. Um, Marcus Rashford, I mean, I know he scored a tap-in, but... Those are the types of goals that I want to see him score. Those are the types of goals that I want to see him on the end of or the type of chances I want to see him on the end of. And actually, even though he may not have scored, you know, a worldie or a fantastic goal, etc., etc., throughout the game, he's just a constant threat. He keeps not making people at the moment, at the, uh, at the minute as well. He's just taking the mick. And when he... That's like, that's like throwback Rashford to me. When he was young and when he was raw, he was flip-flapping people. He was trying stepovers. He was, he was chopping it back like he did against... Uh, Oh, was it Forrest when he when he chopped back? Yeah, I think it was. He chopped back and he passed it to Martial and then Martial um, had a shot. Um, that the keeper probably should have saved, but again, come from Rashford. And he just looks at it. He just looks so hungry to score goals and so willing to, to run at players. It's just a breath of fresh air. And actually, I think Marcel touched on it earlier as well. On the right-hand side, you know, this is, this, is, this is historically a place where we see Marcus play and we've been like, hey, he just, well, he's better coming from the left. We don't really want to have him coming from the right. And I still do think his best position is on the left, but he's proven that he can put a shift in up front. He's proven that he can come from the right-hand side and allow Ganacho to, to, to flourish on the left-hand side. So I really enjoyed that as well. And you know what, David De Gea, you know, a lot of people have spoken about it. He said, I'm not, I'm not walking out of here tonight without my clean sheet. You attackers... You've, you've, you've scored a couple of goals. You think you can just clock off. Not on my watch. I'll do it myself. I'm having my clean sheet. And he kept, he kept, um, he kept at it. Really good saves from him as well. Some routine ones that you'd expect him to save, but some other ones that, are, that, were, that were, you know, really good saves. And also, his distribution as well. Marcel touched on it as well. You know, a couple of times he was just on the front foot with, with his distribution and stuff like that. So really pleased for him. 
the Maguire Lindelof situation, look, I, I do think there's definitely a massive contrast between those two and Varane and Martinez, I think, especially in the first half. There's just this little lethargic kind of way that they play, um, especially when Maguire's on the ball. And look, some of it is the anticipation of he's the bit of the villain and it's like, you know, we, 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 not, we want Varane to play, we want Martinez to play. So he gets a little bit of everyone's always on him, but sometimes he doesn't help himself. Sometimes over hit passes, I think he hit one out for a corner. Um, sometimes taking too long on the ball. Lindelof, he put one out of play as well. And it's, it's not things that lead to chances. That's the, that's the interesting thing about it. It's not raining now. Take my hat down. Take my hood down. Um, it's not leading to chances, but what it is doing is that it just, it just shows, it just shows the night and day between Varane and Martinez versus Lindelof and Maguire. Now look, uh, Bournemouth at home, you know, we should be able to play those two and still, you know, have a relatively comfortable evening. But I think there's just levels to it, isn't there? And there's a reason why Ten Hag prefers Martinez and Varane. But I don't, you know, Lindelof and Maguire weren't awful today. They wasn't, they wasn't shocking. I wouldn't say that, but we just know we've got two better suited players to the style that we want to play in Martinez um, and Varane. Donny van der Beek, man, I, I feel so sorry for him, man. This, this guy... He was trying to get involved in the game, trying to feel his way into the game um, and was doing OK. And then he goes and gets that horrific injury. I've seen the, I've seen the footage of it back and, and the still frame from it. He kind of like hyperextended his knee. I really hope that's not as bad as it looked because that looked like a really bad one. He just can't get any luck right now, can he? Anytime he gets a start or anytime he comes off the bench, you know, he just either can't get involved in the game or something like this happens and he gets an injury and it sets him back. And that looked like a nasty one. It really did. I really do hope that he's going to be OK and not out for as long as, as, as well, as, as how bad it looked, to be honest with you. Um, but, have, but in light of that, with Ganacho coming onto the field, it kind of balanced us a little bit more. I thought, I thought Bruno was actually quite wasteful for large parts of the game. But again, he always gets an assist. He always lays on chances. But for large parts, especially when he was playing on the wing, I, I think he was, he was quite wasteful. But overall, once we had that balance of Ganacho going to the left and Rashford going to the right, it just gave us a different dimension. It just gave us a, a whole new way of playing. And he, he was getting players booked. Ganacho gets an assist as well for Luke Shaw. He hits the post as well. He just looks so direct and he just gives us that, that balance. And yes, I know he's young. Yes, I know we've got to take our time with him as the rain starts to come down here again at Old Trafford. Um, but you can see what he's about. You can see what he's about. So it wasn't perfect today. There were moments where, you know, there were periods of the game, especially at 2-0. I thought there was a period, like a 10-minute period after we went to 2-0 where we got quite sloppy, where we got a little bit wasteful on the ball. Um, but I think overall we were very dominant. I just want to, and I want to big up Fred actually, because I think what Ten Hag's done with Fred at the moment is brought him in at exactly the right times. The team's looking a little bit leggy. Me and Marcel spoke about this in the car on the way up when he said, would you change the midfield? And that game went exactly... That was the exact reason why in the road trip I said, no, you play Ericsson, you get the quality out of him, he, look, he gets an assist for the goal, you know, keeping us ticking over. When the game gets a bit bitty and you need a little bit of energy, you bring in Fred. And Fred did it again, you know, laying on chances as well, getting on the ball, recycling the ball, interceptions. He just gave us that little lift to get over the finish line. And I think that actually is a good, that's a good position for Fred to be in. That's a good role for him to have in this squad um, and there's going to be other games where he needs to start as well to freshen up but I do like what Ten Hag's doing with the substitutions considering his options are limited especially in terms of att attacking wise as well so my man of the match I'm actually going to give it to Luke Shaw I'm going to give it to Luke Shaw I thought he was very very good yes a couple of times he brought down his player a couple of times he um, you know tripped a player up or gave the ball away he wasn't he wasn't absolutely flawless but he was really good today really powerful um you know he, he the build up to the goal that he scored was was from him um and also he was part of another goal that was scored as well and defended really well but a shout out to Juan Bissaka I thought he played well Dallo come on and looked good as well when Dallo came on I did go oh yeah Oh yeah, like you know, Wambi's done really well, really, really well. But Dallo just with his feet and the way he was playing, laying on the ball, got himself a shot as well. He just looks so composed. So he's come back in at the right time. Martinez coming off the bench to a standing ovation as well. Rightly so, World Cup winner. Um, hopefully Eric Ten Hag will get him starting next game as well. So all in all, comfortable evening and Newcastle dropping points as well. We're on their tails. Let's push for third. Why not? Peace. <laughs>